You and your surgeon have decided that spine surgery is right for you. It's important that you fully understand why you need it and what the procedure entails, so we're gonna take a look at the anatomy of the spine and how a procedure will help reduce your pain and improve your mobility. There are a number of reasons why someone may need spine surgery. The most common are pinched or compressed nerves that cause leg pain, worn out discs that can lead to instability and back pain or curvature of the spine. Your spine is made up of soft tissue and bone. The vertebrae are stacked up one on top of the other and are held together by muscles and ligaments. In between each vertebrae are discs that act as shock absorbers, keeping the bones separated. Nerves run down the right and left sides of the vertebrae. The spine runs from your neck down your back to your tailbone. The top seven vertebrae in your neck are called cervical vertebrae. The 12 in your mid-back are the thoracic vertebrae. The next five in your lower back are the lumbar. Below that are the five sacral vertebrae and the coccyx bone. When your spine is healthy, the separating discs are nice and plump, the column is properly aligned, and you can move nicely without disrupting the nerves. As we age, the discs get smaller and smaller, and sometimes they get moved out of position because of wear and aging. The spinal column can change shape. These changes can lead to vertebrae hitting against each other or rubbing against one of the nerves, causing inflammation and a host of other problems. When any of these structures in your back get diseased or damaged, you may experience pain, weakness, nerve issues, or loss of function in your back. There are a few spine procedures to correct these types of problems. Most involve making corrections to keep the nerves from getting compressed and the vertebrae from rubbing against each other. This can mean creating separation between vertebrae, trimming part of the bone, removing part of a disc, or most commonly, fusing some of the vertebrae together. In a fusion surgery, the goal is to stabilize the vertebrae and relieve pressure on the nerves. This may include the use of hardware, such as screws and rods or plates and cages, along with bone graft material. Some procedures that just involve trimming excess bone or soft tissue won't require any hardware. The position of your fusion, the number of vertebrae being fused, and the amount of repositioning required will determine the type of stabilization needed. It takes about three months to set and up to a year for the bone to fully grow and fuse in its new position. In every case, your surgeon will choose the best option for you, customizing the procedure to work optimally for your body. Whatever your specific procedure is, be sure to ask your care team for any additional information not covered in this video. The amount of time you will spend in the hospital after spine surgery depends on when you meet your goals for discharge. You can expect to be up and moving as soon as possible. You will be evaluated by physical therapy on the first day after surgery. Your therapist will work with you during your hospital stay until they feel you are moving safely and ready for discharge. Your medical team will make the final determination on discharge once all goals have been met. While you may have had surgery to treat your chronic pain, surgical pain is to be expected after your operation. Your care team will work with you to provide adequate pain relief so that your pain is at a tolerable level. There are many different neck and spine procedures, so be sure to reach out to your surgeon and your care team for additional instructions and answers to any questions that weren't covered. Our mission is simple to apply the best orthopedic care available in solving your unique problem. We want to provide you with great care while you stay with us and get you on the road to recovery as quickly and fully as possible.